Okay, physics. I want to talk with you about elevators. Uh, there are a couple important things to recognize about elevators. Uh, there's no new forces or anything, but it's important to recognize those things that can change and those things that can't change and to make sense of it from there. So let me show you roughly what it looks like. So this is a simulation that's from um, uh, oh, Boston University. And uh, what is shown here in the blue is the elevator, and in the pink is, I don't know, say, a passenger in the elevator. And it, on the left-hand side, this is going to lift up. And what I want you to watch is I want you to watch this normal force here. So this is a free body diagram just showing the person inside the elevator. So watch this blue arrow. So I'm going to play this. It's going to accelerate. So notice what happened here. And it's going to decelerate and then come to a stop. So uh, let me play again. So a little subtle here. So I'm going to play this. It's when it starts accelerating, goes at constant velocity, and then decelerates and comes to a stop. So hopefully, hopefully you saw that the, that that normal force that the person is experiencing became larger when they're being accelerated upward and become became constant or went to return to its normal when it goes at constant velocity, and then became less when it was accelerating the opposite direction of gravity. So watch, watch the gravity, though. So watch the mg on this individual. So uh, if we do this again, when we play it, when it's accelerating or when it's going at constant velocity or when it's decelerating or when it's stationary, I mean, gravity is always the same. So one of the things that can't change is the force of gravity. So if you move it far away from a planet, then we'll have a way of dealing with that. But in an elevator, the force of gravity, right, your weight doesn't change. Um, <clears throat> So in addition to looking at the person, we could look at the elevator itself. So this is what's shown in this blue box without the pink thing in it. So this is just looking at the forces acting on the elevator. The forces acting on the elevator, in this case, I'm going to have tension holding it up. I'm going to have the weight of the elevator itself. And then I'm going to have the normal force, or this is essentially the, the weight of the individual that's there. Uh, in the middle. So uh, it's fair to call this the normal force acting downwards uh, if we change our, our frame of reference. Um, but uh, let's watch this. So I'm going to play this again. Let's watch this normal force that's inside. Right? So as I play it, that normal force increases, okay, then decreases when he decelerates. So I play it again. So you should see accelerates upwards, goes at constant velocity, accelerates upwards, it goes at constant velocity and now decelerates and returns to rest. So hopefully what you notice there is that while the mass and the weight of the elevator didn't change, that the normal force that it's experiencing from whatever it's carrying, right, the effect of that is much less, right? So um, I think of this as, well, let's look at tension. So we'll play this again. And now I'm going to watch tension at the top here. So as I watch this, so, oh, look, tension is larger goes at constant velocity, and then when it decreases, tension becomes less. So things that can change. So, so it, um, tension is something that can change. Right? So if, my, if, it, if I want to accelerate something or decelerate something in a gravitational field, I can vary the amount of tension that's supplied to that, and that can, it can have that effect. And also the normal force can change depending upon how we, uh, and we have to be careful how we can assign it. But notice the weight does not change. Right? So the weight of the object inside, right? so mg doesn't change, uh, the weight of the elevator doesn't change, um, but the normal force changes. So this brings us to, um, to sort of, sort of curious situations. So let me, let me lay out uh, one common type of a problem that we see. So, um, so here's, here's one of the questions that we, we come across. So I'm going to have, you don't need to see my growth goals for the year. <laughs> so, uh, what, uh, what we have is uh, we're going to have an elevator, and what we're going to do is we're going to stick a scale inside an elevator. Right? So there's going to be a guy standing on the scale. There's my guy standing on a scale inside an elevator. And that scale is going to give us a reading, but be careful. So we get on a scale, and the scale tells us our weight. Right? But really, that's not going to be the case if we step into an elevator. So we step into an elevator, that scale is measuring, well, how much does it have to push back against us, right? So think about this. When you stand on a scale, so here's my bathroom scale, right? And my dial there is saying, oh, look, you know, I weigh 95 pounds. Right? So, uh, so when you step on the scale, we say, well, what's your weight? Well, I weigh 95 pounds. If you take that scale into an elevator, 
right? That scale reading will change depending upon the acceleration or deceleration of the elevator. So this is not telling you your weight. It's telling you the normal force that's pushing back against you, right? So this is, this is a surrogate for weight. So when you're stationary, it's gonna be the same as your weight. But that bathroom scale is telling you, a scale is telling you the normal force. Again, when you're stationary, that's gonna be the same, right? Because here's my weight and here's my normal force. And when I'm stationary, those are the same. When I'm accelerating though, that normal force is gonna be different from the weight of gravity. So here's the thing uh, I'm gonna worry about. So uh, the, the, the key thing with these questions is being clear. So if I diagram just the person inside, and so what's gonna happen? So the person inside is only gonna have one contact point. Right? He's only gonna have the normal force and this is going to have his weight, mg. And if he's stationary, these would be equal. But notice that, uh, that you know, for him to accelerate, so acceleration is going to be the sum of the forces over the mass, for him to accelerate, that normal force is the only thing that can change, and it must change. So if he's accelerating, I don't know, at, you know, at one meter per second squared, right, that difference in the forces divided by his mass must equal one meter per second squared. If I'm interested in the elevator itself, right? well, I'm going to worry usually about this contact point. Right? I'm going to say, well, I'm worried about this contact point. What's happening there at that point? Whatever else is happening, I have the, um, the mass of the elevator plus the mass of the person. And we'll say capital M for elevator, lowercase m, times gravity that, pulling it down. And then I'm going to have tension pulling it up. And if it's stationary or if it's at uh, constant velocity, those two are going to be equal. But if it's accelerating, then those two are not going to be equal. So no, so let me go back to the simulation. So compare what I've done is by, by including the person and the elevator, I sort of eliminated that kind of tricky normal force that exists between the person and the floor because it's an internal force. So it's going to go, it's going to cancel out. Um, so uh, these are the elevator problems, and the thing to recognize is the only things that are going to change are going to be the normal force or the tension, and that the uh, the mass of the individual and the mass of the elevator, and therefore the weight of the mass of the elevator and the weight of the individual aren't going to change. Um, anyway, I hope that's helpful, and let me know if you have questions. Talk to you soon. Bye.